Hey, what's up guys? It's me, A, and I'm back with another episode of Doki Doki Pl uh, Literature Club Plus. And uh, today's a little special because now we're starting the side stories, which is the new content everyone's been waiting for. So, yeah, trust. Begin the side story. Yes, I believe this is the first one. All right. Soccer tri Oh, I've never seen this place before. Soccer tryouts after school in the field, music club, concert, bake sale. Hey, it's the classroom. Well, it's put like it's a different time. Oh, there we go. Now it's a... Okay, everyone. The literature club is starting. Let's all have a seat and take attendance, okay? Ugh. I miss debate club. I miss debate club. <laughs> Monica! <laughs> Feel wrong. <laughs> Monica, no! Monica's the only member of the literature club. In the days that have passed, all her efforts to recruit new members have been fruitless. <laughs> oh man, like the music's new and stuff. Dang. Right, hold on, let me, let me just increase my volume quick. Am I going about this wrong? Monica glances at one of her flyers. The headline is, Do you like literature? Maybe nobody's into literature enough to pick it over their club interests. I can't just rely on people liking literature. I need to sell them on a vision. A vision! Yes, Monica! What kind of vision? Monica rests her head on her desk, deep in thought. But before she realizes it, the recent nights of staying up too late start to catch up to her. It's so quiet and the noise of the air conditioner is soothing. Um... Hello? Hmm? Dang, the new music! Suddenly, a voice causes Monica to snap awake. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I never do this. <laughs> is this a napping club? No, this is... Hey, this is... This is... This, this light motif. I've heard it before. Monica pauses, suddenly embarrassed to admit that this is in fact the literature club. This is the literature club. Yay, I thought I got it wrong for a sec. I'm super sorry, it was like... So unprofessional of me to, uh, of me to do that. Don't apologize, I do that all the time. Oh. Um, did I miss the club meeting? Where is everybody? Well, about that. This is everybody. Really? Just you? But, we're getting more members. I'm working really hard on it. Hold on a sec. If it's just you... That means I get to be vice president! <laughs> Wait, vice president? Uh, what are your qualifications? Well, I'm better at napping than you. <laughs> oh god, I love this. Maybe I should be president. Now you're just making fun of me. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what was your name? Sayori. Sayori? Okay, Sayori. I've been trying really, really hard on this club. Hold on, let me decrease the volume a little bit. This is actually a little too loud. Hold on, sorry guys. I think the volume, uh, like the volume in the, the original game and like this game are a little bit different. Anyways, I've been trying really, really hard on this club. I know you caught me at a weird time, but it's really disheartening not to be taken seriously, you know? I care so much about this. The music. I just want to find other people who do too. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I do care, I promise. I have a hard time being serious, that's all. I didn't mean for it to hurt you. And I was joking about the vice president too. Thing too, I would make a terrible vice president. I mean, I'm sure that... Monica tries to say something reassuring, but it's difficult when she still doesn't know much about Sayori. I'm sorry, this isn't like a real club yet. Would you still be interested in joining after we found a few more members at least? Well, no. I I want to join now. Really? Dang, you had me in the first half, Sayori. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Besides, I could tell how hard you've been working. Sorry. Yeah. You're doing something amazing, you should be proud of it, you know? So let me help you turn something stressful into something fun. If nothing else, I'm good at that, so... 
<laughs> Honestly, how could I possibly say no to that? That's really sweet of you, Sayori. Oh, I'm Monica, by the way. Monica! That's such a cool name. Oh, now you're just trying to cheer me up. But you're smiling! Well, I didn't say it didn't work. Monica Grant glances at the flyer from her on her desk and realizes her name is already written on it. So what do we do first? Well, it's getting pretty late, isn't it? We could go home and try to come up with some new ideas to recruit club members. I could do that. Cool! And I think I need to put some more thought into my into my vision for the club. You know, like a mission. Uh, my mission is to make everyone happy. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I need to think about it. Hey, do you like hugs? I guess so. Sayori suddenly pulls Monica into a friendly hug, then let's go. Some people can just really use a hug sometimes. Besides, Sayori whispers loudly, Hug energy is what keeps me at my best. <laughs> hug energy? Monica laughs. Although Sayori is very different from her, Monica feels her spirits lifted. Maybe it's just because she found another club member. But, well, I'm looking forward to tomorrow then. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to think really hard tonight about how to get more people. Yeah, me too. This is so nice! A day passes and the time comes for the literature club, Monica and Sayori to reconvene. As president, Monica ensures she's first to arrive in the to the club room. But she finds herself waiting longer than expected for Sayori. It's been ten minutes already. Ugh. Maybe Sayori changed her mind about joining. No, that can't be. She was so excited yesterday. I'm getting kind of worried. Suddenly, Sayori comes bounding through the door. In her hand, she's holding a sheet of paper. Sorry, I'm late. I'm here. It's okay. Welcome back. And... Sayori spins over to Monica and deposits her sheet onto Monica's desk. Oh, what's this? Take my hand. Take my hand. Take me forward. Take me to your dreamland. Caution me to watch my step so I can't look back at my footprints. Climb the stairs ahead of me when I look to you. The more I look forward, the more I look up, the more I can lend to you. If you can trust me to follow your pace, I'll trust you to set it. If you can trust me to lend you a smile, I'll trust you to turn it. Take my hand and take me forward. Take me to your dream land. Nice! Hey, this is really good! You wrote this, Sayori! Right? Of course! Wait... Wait, no, that's the wrong side of the paper! Huh? I wasn't ready to share that yet, I'm so embarrassed! <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is what you- I, I knew it! I was like, wait a sec, would they be already be showing us uh, poems this early? But I'm curious now, do you write poetry often? I do, but I'm sure it's not anywhere as good as, it, as you are. <laughs> really? I'm actually terrible at writing poetry. I've never written anything I was happy with. Like, I always read it again a week after I read it, and I'm like, wow, this is so stupid. Oh god, Monica, I totally feel you. Most of my ideas, they either end- uh, the few- they're, sure, there's a few that do end up sticking, but generally most of my ideas I just kind of throw them out because I realize later, nah, it's not very good. <laughs> and, uh, it's like the dramatic version of me doesn't ag agree with the person I want myself to be. Oh god, that hits deep! Something like that. Aww. Uh, hold on. Uh, my neck. You should have more confidence in yourself. You're the literature club president! <laughs> I guess you're not wrong there. I need to, like, set a good example or whatever. Hmm, you know, I can envision the club doing something like that. Doing what? You know, like, sharing poems we write and stuff like that. Oh, yeah! I would love to do that! It's such a good way to learn about other people, you know? It's like, you have so many emotions you can't express to other people, usually. But you can write them when it's a poem, right? Yeah! I think that's a, helping me a form a more cohesive vision for the club. So, I'm glad you showed me. Well, even though it was by accident. Me too! I felt embarrassed at first, but now it feels kind of good that someone else read it. I'll try to show you more of them in the future! <laughs> I'd love that. Oh jeez, I'm getting distracted. Do you want to go to this recruitment brainstorm together? My brain stormed so hard! It was like a brain hurricane. <laughs> oh god, this is so cute, I love it. My brain is a natural disaster! <laughs> See, Hardy, that's terrible! Anyways, let's take a look at this list. <laughs> Make cupcakes. I was hungry. <laughs> But it's a good idea, isn't it? Um, let me think about this. I mean, when we, we have the chance to give people cupcakes? You know, like when they come into the club. What if we said we have free cupcakes on the flyers? I'm like, kind of worried that would bring in the wrong kinds of people, you know? Wrong kinds. People who would come just for the cupcakes and then leave. Well, nobody would do that. That would be mean. You know, I want to find people who are really into literature, even though they don't know it yet. 
Let's see. Next thing on the list. Hunt for people reading books. I don't think I get it. Like, going to the school and finding who are people who are reading books, you know? Like in the morning or during lunch, and we tell them to check out the literature club. Well, the problem with that is, like, wouldn't most people reading books just be doing it for an assignment or something? How do we know they're just reading for fun? Um, well, we could ask them, but then we'd be bothering people who are trying to do schoolwork. I didn't think about that part. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. You're coming up with a lot more things than I can. Oh, and your next idea is hand out flyers and then just to put them on the wall. I definitely like to start doing that. I'm useful. <laughs> I never said you weren't. I just need to think. Where would we tell people when handing them out? What would we, what would we tell people when handing them out? Ah. I don't want to be just like, join the literature club. Let's figure out how we could better engage people. What if you told them about the club activities and stuff? What club activities? Yeah, I guess it's supposed to be my job to come up with that, right? A vision for the club. Okay, sorry. Pretend you're a normal person for a second. Wait, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> you know, like a random passerby who's getting a flyer. How'd you react to the idea of a literature club? Probably like, Literature is stupid. I'm joining the anime club. What the heck? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just thinking about a friend of mine. A friend of yours, you say? Okay, what if I said that, like, we do group, me group reading and discuss it together? I would probably nap through that. That's you, Sayori. Yeah, but that doesn't really sound fun to most people anyway. We need to really catch their interest, you know? Ugh, this sucks. Why is it so hard? Monica, don't be sad. What do you like about literature, Sayori? Me? Well, kind of what I said about the poem earlier. I think it gives you a chance to express yourself. Like, express yourself in ways you normally can't do, when you're just doing your normal day and talking to your friends. I mean, we have so many thoughts and feelings that we just don't get to share, you know? It's like, intimate. Yeah. How do we get that across to people? Sorry, just getting the microphone closer. Uh, we could be like, express your true self. Be intimate with us. Okay, that's kind of... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh. What? What is it? I forgot all my things in the classroom. I must have gotten too excited and rushed here, silly me. Rushed, but weren't. Ah, oh, never mind. Did you want to get your stuff then? I'll forget if I don't do it now. <laughs> well, I'll wait for you then. Okay, it'll, it'll only take. It'll only take a second. Sari dashes out of the room, leaving Monica momentarily alone. Monica sighs and starts jotting her thoughts on a sheet of paper. Express yourself. Be who you want to be. Make new friends. Discover a new you. Discover your heart. No. Write your heart out. No. Write into your heart. Write the way into your heart. Join the literature club. Write the way into your heart. Hey! Wow, that's lame. <laughs> Monica! Ah, you startled me. Sorry, but it's just something important. On the way to my classroom, there's a girl reading a book. Reading a book? Let's hurry and recruit her. Wait, are you sure she's not just doing homework? I can tell she was really into it. Um, is that eerie? I guess you could take a look. Monica grabs one of her flyers and stands up from her desk. The two depart the classroom with Sayori leading the way. This way! You don't have to run. Sayori leads Monica over to a particular classroom, then lowers her voice to a whisper. See, in here! Monica peers through the window. Sure enough, there's a girl sitting alone and intently reading a book. I feel like a creep doing this. You should go inside and talk to her. Me. You're the president, and I'd probably scare her away. Okay, fine. I'll do it. Monica takes a deep breath and timidly enters the classroom. That was fast. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Why? What happened? Um, well, I entered the classroom and she didn't even look up from her book. So kind of just left the flyer on her desk and walked out. <laughs> That's kind of cute. But I'm sure she'll see it and want to join the club. I hope so. Shall we head back now? The two head back to the club room. Sayori feeling rather accomplished and Monica still feeling embarrassed by the encounter. Upon returning, Monica and Sayori resume their strategy meeting. They discuss various different kinds of recruitment tactics, from professional to silly. After going through Sayori's list, and with Monica coming up with ideas of her own, the two end up in a better spot from where they began. Well, I would say today was pretty productive, wasn't it? Yeah, I think we're starting to make progress. I can't wait to get some new members. Hey, what's this? Oh, don't mind that. I was just thinking to myself. Join the literature club right the way into your heart. That's so cute. <laughs> I thought it was a little overdramatic, but 
Sari pauses and thinks for a moment. You know, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. What, what do you mean? Like, I don't know, I feel like I can tell from talking to you today. It seems like you're always afraid of doing something wrong. Yeah, but would you call yourself a perfectionist? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely am. I mean, I always have an idea in my head of how I want things to go, and it's like I can't accept anything less than that. But I think in the end, it helps me try hardest to everything, so I don't think it's that bad. Like, with this club, we have an opportunity to make it exactly into how we envision it. But it feels like we only have one shot at it. So I'm just really afraid of deviating from that. The vision. Ah, I get what you mean, Monica. What's the vision? It's... Monica pauses to think that shakes her head to herself. She sighs. I don't know. I just want everyone to... Monica trails off. Smiling, Sari taps her fingers against a sheet of paper. Right the way into your heart. I think what you're trying to do is to make the club that you need the most out of anyone. Well, you're the one who knows yourself best, you know, of course, but I'm here to help you. Monica returns to Aerie's smile. It's sort of analyzing how kind you are. We're really going to make this the best club ever. Sari nods and the two remain silent for a moment, lost in thought. The only sound is a steady whisper of the air conditioner. The only movement is the afternoon sunlight trickling its way in and out of the moving clouds. Sari breaks the moment with a huge big yawn. Time to go home? You tell me, you're the president. <laughs> in that case, today's meeting today's meeting is officially over. I look forward to tomorrow. Me too! Sari beams and crabs her things. You can go on ahead. I need a few minutes still. Monica. Hmm? Poems. Oh. Become the flower. A feeling of joy is a flower plucked from the ground. The color, the scent, it's so pretty in my hair. Every day I pluck some flowers as though they grew just for me. A lifetime of peace and nourishment yanked away in an instant. All for me, all for joy. I need more, I need more joy, I need more happy. Pluck, pluck, pluck every day. So pretty in my hair. Pluck, pluck, pluck. You're going to die and you too. Beneath my flower feet, a flower stands alone. It beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging ro roots. Caressing in the final joys. Wait a sec, this is a poem from, oh. Caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers, but to one ends, I look in every direction. In the field I stand in, the prosperous field is a barren wasteland. The fruits of my labor, the carnage of my joy, and that is why I've decided I must become the flower. What the? Wait, Sayori? What? Wait. Oh, that's it? Sayori! <clears throat> there was once a ladybug. It was so small it took a really long time to crawl from here to there. It is really tiring to fly for too long. Nobody squishes ladybugs because they're cute. Does that make them better than other bugs? Do ladybugs know they're cute? I think they're too preoccupied with bug things. And so, the ladybug crawled around and did bug things. This story wasn't really going anywhere. But I hope you- I know you don't mind. I hope you think it's nice for being there anyway. Like ladybugs. Like this ladybug. The one who clings like a doof to your sleeves because you know you won't squash it. If it doesn't bug you, will you stay a while? Is this written to MC? Oh god, Sayori. Yeah, the morning sun. 
Is it, oh, they don't have the other two. Uh, the, the CGs with the football or like so soccer posters and stuff. Oh. Hold on, just turning this. All right, trust part two. Yes. Another day passes in a flash, and it's already time for the next club meeting. Although Monica... I'm so stupid. How did I let myself be the center of attention? Sari's going through these kind of fongs, and I'm letting her comfort me instead of the other way around. What kind of club president does that? This whole time I didn't think to ask her about her own feelings. So much for the stupid vision. Sari enters the clubroom with her usual smile, but upon seeing the downcast Monica, her smile quickly fades into an expression of concern. M Monica? Is everything okay? I'm really sorry. I'm such a terrible friend. Huh? What? Wh what are you talking about? You're an amazing friend. Monica shakes her head. I made this all about myself. Even you said so yesterday. You told me that I'm trying to make the club that I need the most, right? But my problems are so trivial compared to yours. Sari responds quietly. What are you talking about? Through the silence, Sari mutters her realization. I left my folder here. Monica stares blankly ahead, unable to come up with a response. I wasn't ready to share those. Now you're worrying about me. I don't want that. But why? We're friends, right? Wordlessly, Sari nods. Friends look out for- oh god, I, I heard this one's really sad. Friends look out for each other. I want to be here for as much as you as you're here for me. Another long moment passes in silence. Their air is incredibly heavy. This is different. It wasn't just about you yesterday, it was about the club. Besides, things were so happy yesterday. You don't need to do this all of a sudden. I don't want it. I like happy. So, if you do this, then you're just being selfish. Monica massages her forehead, struggling through the fr frustrations of such a paradox. It's understandable that Sari isn't ready to share certain things, but as unfair it is for Monica to pry, it's also painful for Monica to force herself to ignore the needs of her friend. I'm so sorry I looked. I disrespected your privacy. No, I don't blame you for looking. You would have at least needed to check if it was mine. Sari's gonna blame herself again, isn't she? Yeah. Monica takes a deep breath. Okay. I understand you don't want me to worry. And I think I'll be able to put this aside so we can move on. But can you promise me something? Promise you what? Monica pauses to collect her thoughts. This is a literature club. It's a place where people can express themselves in the ways that life normally doesn't allow them to. That's the vision. In fact, it's our vision. Right the way into your heart or whatever. So I just want you to promise me that you'll remember that too. <clears throat> It doesn't have to be right now, but I want you to be here for when you need it. I want us to be ourselves like that. Sayori smiles gently. I'll promise if you promise. Unable to help it, Monica returns Sayori's smile. Aw, I promise. Me too. As the conversation closes, the mood in the room is lifted. With that behind them, it's time to proceed to the club activities. So, wanna teach me about poetry? Huh? But what about recruitment? It's fine, we have plenty of time for that. New music. But right now, I feel like I want to do this. I mean, I do have to fulfill the end of my promise, you know? <laughs> There's no way I could say no to that. Just don't expect much. I do a lot of writing, but it's not like I'm a scholar or anything. That's fine. I think I just need, like, some more mo some motivation. I'll never know when, uh, where to start when it comes to writing poems. Starting isn't so hard. You just kind of need to write down your feelings and see where it takes you. Yeah, but wouldn't, that wouldn't come out any good. It's not supposed to. You're gonna have to fight your perfectionist mind on this one. <laughs> you could just start by writing your feelings and see what uh, kinds of things it makes you think of. And then when you turn your feelings, in, and then you can turn your feelings into a little story. Hmm. You can get your feelings down first and make it sound pretty later. It's like not building a railroad where you go from one end to the other. It's more like a collage, what you want to put in, and then you arrange it in a pretty way. At least that's not- that's how I do it. It's not like it's the only way. Wait, that- wait, Monica's writing tip of the day, the first- 
I just realized something. Oh. Dang. Sayori came up with that one. That's so cool. So, like, even though Monica, you know, like... Like, you know what happens to Monica all throughout, like, the later acts, throughout acts, like, two and, like, three. You know the way she behaves, but at the end of the day, I feel like she's still heavily influenced by her friend, Sayori. And I have a feeling that Yuri and Natsuki are eventually going to come to influence her in some way or another, too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, keep it. What? Why? Are you calling me an idiot? Of course not. But the point is you're not supposed to police your feelings, right? Be as dramatic as you want. <laughs> but I was just... Hell yeah. Underneath the scribble, Monica writes, You idiot. She stares at the paper. Her words stare back at her. It's kind of funny how I wrote that one. Wrote what I'm mad at myself for. And then did the exact same thing anyway. This is really going to take some getting used to. I believe in you. Thanks, I do too. Me, I mean. But also you, of course. Hehe. <laughs> Monica continues the exercise, jotting down her thoughts. It's surprisingly a, a struggle to write without overthinking it. Wow. Phew. Monica looks up and down at her sheet. Gosh, I feel so tense looking at this. I hate it. But it's also kind of liberating. Mm-hmm. I can tell how hard you're trying. It makes me happy. I think you'll be good at writing poems. <laughs> Don't give me too much credit. I'd have to try really, really hard at it. But I think it's something that I'll enjoy doing. With you, Sayori Beeps. I'll stop here, but we still have time. Let's try to work on a new flyer for the club. I'll be so picky about the language. Yay, let's do it. Monica and Sayori proceed with their work. With each passing day, the two of them become more confident in the club. Not simply from their recruitment planning, but from their vision as well. As their bond strengthens, so does the essence of the literature club. Finally, they begin to truly feel it's only a matter of time until they find more members. Another day passes. As usual, Monica is the first one to enter the club room. As usual, Monica is the first one to enter the club room. With her is a printout of the revised literature club flyer, complete with all the new ideas Monica and Sayori came up with. <clears throat> if only this was a flyer we gave that one to the reading girl the other day. It's so much more attractive than the old one, but the new catchphrase is featured clear clearly in the center of the flyer. Write the way into your heart! Surely common sense would say that the one writes from the heart, not into the heart. But the message being delivered is that one can use writing to discover themselves. Hopefully, Monica and Sari had thought that it would be enough to garner some curiosity from the students. Why do we feel so tense looking at this? Monica thinks back to her previous meeting when she performed the writing exercise. Was I always this bad at expressing myself? How am I supposed to be president if I can't even demonstrate what the club is about? The literature club is truly beginning to take form. But with that... The weight on Monica's shoulders only becomes heavier. Debate club was always about rigid structure, formulating airtight points and counterpoints, and delivering them with conviction. It was about the person on the outside. That's why Monica was so good at it. It existed entirely within her realm of comfort. It's suffocating. I need to break through this mental wall. I need to learn to express myself, for real. Monica pulls out a sheet of paper and grabs her pen. She presses a tip, firmly gets Wait a sec. But her hand doesn't move. Instead, dang, ink pens, Monica, that's pretty fancy. Instead, a tiny blot of ink collects around the tip of the pen. Monica li lifts her pen and, dang, stares at the little blotch. For some reason, she feels compelled to run her finger across it. As she does, the black ink smears across the paper, ruining Monica's canvas. Ugh. Out of pure sprite, a spite for herself, Monica presses the ink down once again, letting the ink collect. She creates a second smear on the paper. Come on, Monica. Just move your hand. Monica writes. Dang. This is what I get for seeking perfection. A stain. 
Monica's dang, you're really hard on yourself. Monica slides the paper away from her and puts her head down on the desk. The air conditioner seems louder today. I'm here! Hi. Hi! Monica hears Sayori approach her desk and stop for a second, probably reading the piece of paper. Then she sits down at the adjacent desk. Bad day? Mm-hmm. Me too. You too. The new flyer looks so good. You've been working so hard. On the club, but also something else, I think. I can't do it. I'm sorry. It's so hard to just be vulnerable. Mmm. Sayori takes a sheet of paper from Monica's desk. She writes something down, then stares at it for a while. Can I trust you? Of course. You could trust me with anything. Sayori gazes at Monica with sadness in her eyes. Understanding the signal, Monica takes the paper from Sayori's desk and reads it. Oh, dang, Sayori. I don't know if I can read that for YouTube. <clears throat> Sayori! This is really, really hard for me. Her voice shakes. So if I can do it, then you can too. Sayori, you angel! Because you're like a million times better than me. It's completely not true. Sayori takes a deep breath trying to steady herself. It's something about me I've never told anyone before. Even now, my head is like screaming at me to stop. Wait, you don't, you don't have to force yourself. I mean, just because of the promise yesterday, I want to. It just feels right. I mean, maybe it's part of the reason I came to this club in the first place. This is the literature club. I trust you more than I'm scared. At those words, Monica stands up. Sayori must have taken days to work up the courage for this. Were Monica's own futile but genuine uh, efforts actually the push that Sayori needed? Sayori's deliberate breaths can be heard over the air conditioner. As she prepares to continue, Monica waits in gentle silence. I have this problem where I get really upset when people worry too much about me. I can't control it. It's like, why waste your energy worrying about me when you could just be happy instead? So you never tell anyone about these kinds of thoughts that I have. It's so much easier to just smile and help everyone else be happy. But that's... terrible. That's what Monica wants to say, but she stops herself in fear, saying the wrong thing. It's just if everyone knew about it, they wouldn't treat me the same anymore. Like, whenever I'm not smiling, everyone would worry about me and ask me what's wrong. I know that because it used to be like that. Sari pauses, seeming to recall something in the past. I just want everyone to be happy. That's the most important thing to me. And letting people look inside my head doesn't bring happiness to anyone. Sari pauses again, her soul and expression making her look almost like an entirely different person. How'd you find the courage to tell me this? You're not worried that I'll be one of those people too? I am worried. Part of me really hates myself for doing this, but another part of me, I just think felt it would be a little different this time. Whenever we talk about what the club is supposed to mean, I keep feeling, I kept feeling it like it was the right thing for me to do. Especially after you've been trying so hard to express yourself too. It just made me feel like I could say it in confidence and our friendship doesn't have to change. Haha. <laughs> Me too, Monica. Me- oh, me too. I was just so lost until you showed up. You're so brave, Sarah. You're so strong and brave. I don't even compare. Monica steps forward. But if nothing else, I can at least offer you some hug energy. If you'd like. <laughs> Aww! Wordlessy! And without a smile, Monica rests her forehead- uh, Sayori rests her forehead on Monica's shoulder. Hey. God, it's just, just so, it's just so amazing with the music. There's a light motif, Sayori's light motif, there's... Through their contact, Monica can almost feel the torrent of thoughts swimming in Sayori's head. And at this moment, enchanted by the air of the club, Monica realizes that all the days have passed and this is the one where she really, really hopes that nobody new walks through the door. She speaks softly. 
You're like the sweetest girl I've- Oh. You're like the sweetest girl I've ever met. You can say anything. I'll never judge you. I promise. Sari's breath begins to quiver. She takes several deep breaths, trying as hard as she can to start speaking to say things that she never once dared say out loud. Finally, she speaks in a choked voice. I'm so... No, you're not, Sayori! I'm so worthless. I'm worthless and everyone would be... No, that's not true! She presses a sob as a tear falls down her cheek. I'm just an inconvenient... Sayori, don't cry! I'm not good at anything. I just feel like everyone has to put up with me and I hate it. I hate it. The more Sayori speaks, the more she fails to control her voice, falling to the victim with the overwhelming sadness clutching at her throat and chest. I don't want to have these thoughts. I want them to go away. Now I'm making you put up with me and I just want to die. say that it's definitely one thing that makes me happy. <clears throat> but I might want to get a snack first. Teary, isn't it? That was... Okay, uh... That was... Oh god, that was, that was, that was pretty emotional. Uh... Um, well, yeah, that's... Okay, I'm gonna... I'm, I'm gonna... I'm gonna take... I'm gonna have some of these ones up, uh, event later, so... Yeah, that's... That's, that's all there is for this video, folks. Uh... I, I hope y'all enjoyed this video, folks. Uh, oh, is that a... No, that's just a piece of toast. I thought that was a fly. Um, anyways, uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and uh, leave a comment down in the comments below. Um, anyways, uh, that's all there is for this video, folks. The sky's up, and you guys are awesome. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. I need some time.